Hello again and welcome to another edition of Wednesdays in the Word. Kim and I are here uh, talking through the book of Job, led by uh, David Ramos and his book called Enduring with Job. We're up to chapter 3. We're looking at his lament and the title for tonight is Honest Suffering. And uh, we'll dig a little bit more into that once Kim reads. Kim, if you would please read verse 11 of chapter 3 and then verses 20 through 26. All right. Why did I not die at birth, come out from the womb and expire? Why is life given to him who is in misery and life to the bitter in soul, who long for death but it comes not and dig for it more than for hidden treasures, who rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they find the grave? Why is light given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? For my sighing comes instead of my bread, and my groans, groanings are poured out like water. For the thing that I fear comes upon me, and what I dread befalls me. I am not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, but trouble comes. That sounds like the cry of somebody in deep pain and mourning. Mm -hmm. Again, tonight's... Uh, discussion is entitled Honest Suffering, and David Ramos shares with us, Job finally breaks the silence as he cries out, I wish I had never been born. No more quietly accepting what has happened. No more sitting by and watching his life get destroyed. The rest of the book will contain the honest, visceral thoughts of Job as he searches for a purpose in his pain. This initial scene is difficult to read through and painfully familiar for anyone who has gone through a deep, terrible time in their life. Job asks, what is the point of life if while we are living it, all, all we want is death? All he does is suffer all day long. Everything he thinks and feels is pain and his worst fears have come true. He is completely broken and thoroughly exhausted. Even here, Job is acting with bravery and integrity. He's being honest about his pain. So often we try and hide our, fe our true feelings about what is going on. We try to keep it from our friends, our family, or our spouse. We also tend to keep it from ourselves and from God. But that is not what God wants. Our maker and creator is not unaware of our suffering. He sees it. He knows it's happening. We do not honor him by keeping silent or acting like our real pain is no big deal. Herod Kirshner, a writer on the book of Job, puts it like this. A God worth worshiping is a God who prefers honesty, honest anger to flattery. This is the first step to dealing with our pain in a righteous and God-honoring way to be honest about it. If your pain is making you wish you had never been born, say it. If your suffering has made you question God's goodness, tell him. Pour out your insides. Don't hold anything in. God is not politically correct. He doesn't want you to approach him and only say what you think you're allowed to say. He wants it all. The rawness, the pain, the doubt, he wants the mess. God wants us to acknowledge our mess so that he can enter it. And the takeaway David has for us is tonight, don't sugarcoat your pain. God wants the real you. And I don't know, what are your first thoughts on that? Because that, you know, to have, sometimes we worry about fighting back against God, about being angry with God when we don't understand things. Yeah, I think uh, just me personally, um, I always, I live by this a lot philosophy, the further I build myself up, the further I have to fall, you know, so, so I'm pretty real. And um, I get told that a lot, actually, that <clears throat> you're very real, because I, I try not to I'm human, and I think a lot of times, especially in a pastor's family, you get that persona of you know perfection. My kids should sit, you know, follow me like little ducklings, and and I had three boys that were crazy, <laughs> so that illusion was never going to be something that um, 
I could maintain and I didn't think that was a good place to put my energy. <laughs> so um, I'm, I have faults. I, I, I have bad days. I, so I, I, and I, and I hope, and it's always been my prayer that God uses that as ministry. I hope when there's a young mom struggling with her kids and she had seen me struggling with my, like, like I hope she would come to me and go, I'm, I'm struggling here so that I could cry with her and pray with her. And I, I want to be approachable. I don't want to be, I don't want somebody to ever look at me and, and think she's just got her act together. So like, she's not going to be a source of comfort. Trust me, neither of us have our no. act together. No, no, <laughs> no. If you could see the behind the camera, you'd see our, our kitchen dishes and stuff. Yeah. So we're real people. And um, we are. And, and, and that's always struggle. a struggle. Yeah. I know um, some people don't, don't feel like they can come to me with issues because uh, I, I'm their pastor. And, and you know what? I struggle with things just like everybody else mm -hmm. too. And, and you know, um, yeah, it, it, it's a tough life. And it's, it's it harder if we try to keep everything inside. Well, that's it why just God needs created community. I, I think that's one of the gifts of church. You know, we've made it into this holy of holy things. And then God intends for it to be a worshipful place, but it's also a place where we connect and are a family to help each other through life. Because um, we're all out there trying to make it through and we can't do it alone. We, we have to be helping each other. It's, it's hard, humaning is hard. It is, and especially during this time uh, when, when everything else is, when Satan is working through uh, things, forces in the world to keep us separated. Um, God wants us to continue to have uh, community. And that was, I think, one of the things, you know, like yesterday we had Tuesdays together. And uh, it was so nice. There was, I don't know, about six of us or so. Uh, there hasn't been a big crowd, but there's always room for more. Um, but it's just a good time to, to vent a little bit about what's going on and where we're at, but uh, to catch up and to, to see each other eye to eye. Um, and that's very much needed because, like you said, life is tough. Mm -hmm. And we're all in it together. We're all trying to walk through this toward that day when we get our heavenly reward. Um, but in the, in the meantime, it, it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if, if you're struggling with something, please please post here. Please reach out to us. Uh, well, you don't have <laughs> you to don't post. You don't have to. You don't want to. You can if, if, message if, us privately. Right. <laughs> but we're here. Call us on the phone, whatever. We're here for you. Yeah. Um, but if you have any um, things that you'd like to share or ways that through this you've been strengthened uh, that might encourage somebody else yeah. please please post those kind of things here um, because you know that's what this is for this is an opportunity for us to to just try to be a little bit open and real with you and hopefully you with us and to get to know each other better as we dig into God's word and hopefully he uh, reveals himself a little bit to us as well any other thoughts that you have for tonight? No, I think you covered everything. I, I just, I feel bad for, I just felt Job's heartache in reading these words and I just would want to put my arms around him. <laughs> and, I, and I think that, that, that God is reminding us that that's how we carry, carry each other's burdens. So we can't fix everything for everybody, but we can make sure that they're not alone in the journey. Right. And, you know, I guess looking back briefly, I thought I was done, but we've had, <laughs> we've had some struggles in life um, that at the time we very much wondered why, why are we going through this? What, and, and did some complaining to God and, and afterwards, yeah, it has made us a little bit more real, um, a little bit more open to seeing seeing others through a little bit different eyes because you know we're all kind of just products of of our experiences and that we've all had different tough experiences and so we come at things from a lot of different 
directions and having patience with each other is is and maybe to wrap it up i i also think that god never doesn't take us through painful times just to hurt us no. he, he will never leave you in that pain without purpose and leading you to a purpose that will make it useful to his kingdom and to to his glory and so just sometimes i remind myself of that when i'm going through something that just feels too hard i remember that god sees the end of it and he will make it useful to his purpose and that's the thing that i want most is to be useful to him so. right yeah that's yeah. so well we hope that uh this little discussion we talked tonight, a lot tonight we Holy moly. did <laughs> i guess we had a lot on our minds but uh, or we just rambled which <laughs> is also Us? true <laughs> but we're glad that you joined us and again if, if there's any way we can walk with you please feel free to reach out we'd we'd love to be there with you pray with you cry with you uh, be a shoulder of support however mm -hmm. we can uh, know that we're in this with you and uh, god's continued blessings and prayer and we have a closing <laughs> prayer from david and we'll i'll add a little he says father Help me not to hide behind what I think I should say to you. I want a real relationship with you. Please give me the courage to do that, to lay our hearts bare, to then walk with one another as you've created us in relationship, uh, to look after the needs of each other so that we can build each other up, so that we can encourage each other, so that that we can find peace in your love and grace, purpose and comfort. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, have a good evening, and we look forward to seeing all of you soon. Bye. Bye.